Hey everyone, today we're talking about the final verdict of iOS 17. Sorry, I meant to take this off. Alright, so iOS 17 is about to be released. As of the time I'm publishing this video, it's less than 24 hours literally for it to be released. So we'll talk about the couple of features you should probably try out and a couple of the features that haven't really been talked about over the months of beta testing so as usual if you like my videos you may want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss on future updates and like the video comments anything extra you feel i should know and let's get started as many of you know already the first change comes with the lock screen yeah let's start from that because that's literally the first place you look at when you touch your phone screen so on the lock screen, you can now resize your the fonts you use for your clock. Yeah, you can now resize it in a much more flexible way than iOS 16. iOS 16, you could only just choose pre-sized fonts, but now you can choose the font and then size it to the level that fits your requirements. Next comes with the standby mode. Yeah, the standby mode is also part of your lock screen, kind of. So this is a mode that basically shows brief information. It's kind of an always on display, or let's just say it's a semi always on display on the non-pro phones. But from the 14 Pro and 15 Pros, you should get always on display with standby mode. So when you tilt your phone in a landscape view and then you leave it charging overnight or something, you can have a kind of view of like a clock or something. Yeah, they call it standby because mostly should a standby clock that turns red on in a dark environment so basically it shows you brief information and it acts as a nice aesthetic way of like decorating your phone while it's inactive yeah or while you keep it to charge at night and besides it runs directly from charging so you don't really have to worry about battery consumption now that i think about it like every single future i'm going to talk about right now like briefly you all know about it because those are like the shining stars the highlights of ios 17 as a whole you know about standby mode you know about contact posters you know about the live voicemail that transcribes your voice when you like leave a facetime voicemail or something you also know about personal voice offline apple maps you know about sharing passwords with friends family and colleagues you also know about the enhanced two-factor authentication you also know about interactive widgets and screen distance new message i message ui and the rest of them yeah so the first is airdrop now airdrop is no longer as intrusive as it used to be i mean in the first few bits as let's say the first three airdrop could notify you of an incoming picture that has already been received into the phone just for your status bar or the dynamic island yeah that was it you didn't really have to throw you over to the photos app but then from beta 5 upwards, I noticed Apple brought this back. So when you receive a, a picture or a video, it throws you into the photos app. Trust me, it's really intrusive. Imagine playing a game, a competitive online game like Call of Duty Mobile, and then such comes up. It just throws you back to the photos app without even like just giving you a heads up. I mean, what's the point of the heads up notifications? Then? We also have updates on the App Store. So now, while you download an app, it shows the estimated time remaining. I think it's based on your network speed also. Yeah, so you can have like a more realistic idea rather than just looking at the circular moving bar. So that's it for the app store. It's, it's that simple. And also, I think the app names are now in lowercase. Yeah, yeah, they are capitalized, the first letters. But then before it was like completely capitalized, but now it's just the first letter. So let's move on to camera. Camera now has a level option that lets you like place your phone in a straight position before taking a picture and it does this by showing you lines that need to be balanced and it makes some haptic feedbacks each time you balance them so it helps you take straighter pictures actually it is very helpful because i'm very fond of like not leveling my pictures well enough and needing to slightly rotate them so that should also help and also why points not a qr code it shows the link or whatever the qr code is for at the bottom of the display yeah before it's just float around like the qr code on the camera window and it was kind of like hard to click and now we have clock now in the clock app the system clock app you can now set more than one timer and all of them 
are going to appear on your lock screen. Yeah, and they all operate independently of each other. So you can have a timer for one, two, three, four, five events, and you're good to go. Now on FaceTime, you can now leave kind of voicemail or should I say video mail messages when someone doesn't answer your call. And also you can now react so like you can react during the FaceTime video call with reaction, should I say emojis, not emojis per se, but emojis are modified in a 3D way. And they have this depth effect kind of effect. You know, Apple is really good at AR mapping and stuff like that. On the iPhone, it uses a true depth camera to like push you in front of the reactions when it needs to be done. Yeah, basically that. And now there is one with find my, you can now like share an air tag with up to five people when previously find my could only allow air tags location to be viewed by one Apple ID, but now up to five Apple IDs can view the status of an air tag. They also have updates with free form, the app almost everyone forgot about during iOS 15's launch. I think that was iOS 15 or 16. Okay, I think it was 16. I don't, I'm not really sure. But yeah, even I don't use the app anymore. So I had there are new tools, including a watercolor brush, a calligraphy pen, and like a highlighter kind of variable highlighter pen. And it helps to enrich like the, you know, uh, freeform is like a, a how that puts it, an interactive board that many users or contacts have access to. You can share ideas. Yeah, that's the point of freeform. Now let's talk about health. In the health, like the health app itself just has a few UI changes. Not much has really changed for the health app itself. But then there are a few changes with like the sub parts of health, like journal for instance. I think that's like an extension of the health app or the mood tracking, stuff like that. Those are like inside the health app, but the health app itself just has a little gradient kind of header change. Yeah, nothing really special. Now, this is a very important feature you should definitely take note of. And then it has to do with the mail app. And you might want to rethink using another mail service. Trust me, Apple is really good at what they do. Now you see there is this thing most of us can relate to. We all receive verification codes, either through mail or messages or boots. Like us, like me, I use boots and I receive a lot of codes on both platforms. And I've, I've actually thought about this, but it actually came to my notice a short while ago that actually it exists on iOS 17. Now you see the mail app can generate verification codes through iOS 17, but it has to be the default mail. So basically when you need a verification code and then they send it through the Apple system default mail app, you get like a suggestion offering to like copy and paste it directly. So where you need it to be, just like in messages, yeah. But it has to be with the system mail app, yeah, that's the catch. So everybody's going to have to go back to using the system mail app. Now with maps, you can now download offline maps, yeah. It's been a long requested feature that has been available on Google Maps, but on Apple Maps, you can now do that. So uh, I guess people that use Apple Maps are happy. Not me, though, I don't really use Apple Maps. With the messaging app, there are slight UI tweaks. There is a more distinctive way to send a voice note or should I say a recorded message. Yeah, there, there's a new arrangement for the iMessage apps. And also there is something called inline location sharing. And now there is a WhatsApp-like reply gesture. I mean, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, they all use that drag backwards kind of reply gesture. Apple previously you had to hold it down, but now you can just drag it and reply. Easy. Now, my favorite again, the music app. It supports a new kind of now playing where the album cover kinds of plays an animation and fades into the volume slider and the media playback icons. That's the backward, forward, and the pause, pause and play. So like, it's very pleasing to look at. It's like a live, ads from the artist yeah and it's very nice it was available on spotify like forever but then ios 16 didn't really have it but now ios 17 has it and trust me many users are going to feel more spotify experience in apple music without the ads now with the phone app there is a slight ui change there are new arrangements for like the incoming call screen you can put custom posters on it and you know the whole new 
color matched calling screen for the contact you're trying to call. If it's default, it shows kind of grayish, but if the contact has a customized picture or poster, it shows a gradient that relates to the, like, the colors of that picture or poster. Yeah, that is for the call app. And now Safari. Safari has a more secure, like private tab section. It now requires a face ID to access it. Previously, it was not like that. Yeah, so that's more secure for people that have something to hide. Not me though. Okay, sometimes I do have something to hide, but once in a while. Now, Spotlight Search. In Spotlight Search, there are interesting updates. The first is that you can now search and you can get toggles. Yeah, they are like toggles that show for apps. Like you can search for like airdrop and you literally see a turn off or turn on airdrop toggle appear. So search, Spotlight Search is more like it's more like of a search because it brings out almost every single result you can get, even if it means a button. Yeah, so that's actually more comprehensive. It has advanced neural engine networks that have been placed by Apple to take advantage of your phone's power to generate almost every kind of results for what you need it to like generate. All right, so like there are a few other features like predictive text, you know, stuff like that. But we'll get into that once people have gotten like the first few. That's the stable users on the iOS 17 on 18 September. So I guess that brings us to the end of this video. We'll cover more features as time goes on. Yeah, there are a couple of features like Journal that haven't even been released. Or I doubt they'll even be released until like let's say 17.2 or 17.3. Who knows? Yeah, so as time goes on. We'll talk about more futures and thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have fun, turn on post notifications. And I heard you out.